Thanks a lot for being here. Thanks for having us. Um, so I think to uh, a lot of your fans, I mean, you guys are selling out rooms all the way across the country. You're very, very well known. There are going to be people listening to this uh, program this morning uh, or whenever they listen to it uh, who don't know you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask some pretty basic questions. Uh, when did you guys meet? Uh, we met in a studio in London about, wow, six years ago. Um, and then we started writing songs together. Mm-hmm. And Hold yeah. on, so, so you, you met just, just where you randomly walked into a studio and saw one another? Basically... Kinda, yeah. Somebody recommended Anthony to me as a producer, right? So I kind of just went round just to say hello. I was like, "Oh, you're you're quite nice." And then, <laughs> <laughs> I'll yeah. come back. You'll you'll do. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, and then we just started hanging out and writing songs for like a year, and then yeah. eventually released one um, two years later, and that was the start of our band. Well, this the, the story here is really interesting because, uh, and we we talk a lot about songwriters on the show and, and pop songwriting on the show, and we interview a lot of people who write songs for other people on the show. And I, I found it so remarkable that when you guys got together, it wasn't necessarily with the intention of recording or releasing a record. It was it was to write songs for others. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we just wanted to be songwriters sitting at home, not touring. It yeah. wasn't really on the agenda. Um, we do love touring, but it was never literally on the cards. Right. Um, so we released a song a month, um, which was awesome because we got to ma- basically have a deadline, which you never get to have as artists or... Mm. Musicians, mm, just with a view of like building a portfolio. So, like within a year, we will have twelve or thirteen songs that we can then pitch to other people, yeah. and we'll both sing on them, so we can pitch to male and female artists. Right. Jobs are good, and it all backfired. And then you start seeing the views go up, right? Yeah. On SoundCloud. Yeah. And yeah. was it really, honest to God, was it a uh, oh God? The views are going down. <laughs> oh, oh, <God>. no. <laughs> <laughs> was was it? It uh, was. It was just really weird because nothing like that had ever happened to us. And, you know, like we'd had solo projects where we'd be pleading with our friends and family to come down to shows or like listen to our EEPs and like spread them around. Yeah. This we're, just happened so organically. Yeah, we were, we were anonymous for the first six months. Yeah. Um, no one, even our friends didn't know. So there was times we'd be at house parties and our song came on and we'd be like, this is we awkward. Can't say anything. <laughs> so, um, yeah. It was really odd. It was weird. Yeah. It yeah. pulled us definitely. And was it a real reluctance that like, oh God, I think we're going to have to actually do this now? Or are you kind of excited about it? Oh, hugely oh, yeah. excited. I just think we never knew we were going to be doing it. So yeah. it was just... It's just a side project. And like we each had our own managers and even like five months into the project, you know, um, we had to be like, guys, you should probably meet because we were fielding so many requests from people. Oh, you had separate, you had separate. We were yeah, just entirely doing, do- yeah. this was literally a side project. It was just right. like a bit of fun. And um, so then our managers met and now they're obviously best buds and... Uh, <laughs> Now here we are. Can you take me to a moment? Was there a moment where you realized this might be life-changing? One? Um, Playing our first show outside of the UK was crazy, which was actually our second ever show. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Where was it? Um, so we played four shows to start off. We played London, um, LA, New York, and Paris. Um, oh, that's a pretty good, pretty yeah. good run for your first <laughs> yeah. shows. I'm not going to lie The week that our album came out, we played those, and we were like, oh, cool, we're done now. Like, we've done four <laughs> shows. And then we've done like 200 and... 80 cents or something. So your second show ever is where? It was in Los Angeles. And? 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 And how did it go? Oh, oh, it was good. <laughs> yeah. And? And? California. Uh, and? It was The hot. United States. <laughs> no, it was, it was insane. It was, um, it was just the first show, like we've both played hundreds and thousands of gigs before that, but it was the first show I think either of us had played where you just felt like this was, it was different. And What made ev- you feel that way? Well, everyone in the room, because of the nature of how we'd released our music, everybody and still, everybody knows every word to every song. It's not like we've ever had one big hit single, mm-hmm. which is, is a blessing, like it's a blessing and a curse, but it's amazing because we still play shows and everyone just knows every song on our album. So yeah. it was just so refreshing and so... It was cr- people were so loud. Like it felt I, like such a community. Didn't it was it, the first yeah, show. and you just saw people dancing and people kissing and just people on their own just losing their miles and, miles away from where you were from. Yeah, yeah, the other yeah, side of the world. Bizarre. It was, it was like a dream. So now that you're writing this new record, you are going from writing for others, ideally that ends up being mm-hmm. accidentally a career for you, <laughs> to having to write songs for yourself as a wonder. Uh, how does that change the process? Um. We try to keep everything really close to, between Josephine and I, right? Mm. So we do all the writing ourselves, all the production ourselves, and that's we didn't want to change that formula. Did it feel it different is, this time? Um, it felt a lot more personal, I more think. More personal. Because we were writing what was, for me, like our first record. Because we were writing those songs to pitch to other people, they never felt truly about our lives, I suppose. We were t- mm. telling stories about other people and other scenarios. Character-based, yeah, yeah. Um, whereas our new album, Ultra Life, is literally... 
like I see so many moments of the last couple of years in that record. I mean, I should say the new albums are stunning. It really is beautiful. Thank you. But were you worried that you would lose some of the like the magic from that first kind of the naivety of youth of not really knowing what you're doing and not to say that you didn't know what you're doing, but you know, you're just writing these songs and it happens to work out. Were you, were you worried? Yeah, there's definitely that kind of, that, that was a huge DIY element to the first record. Um, it was so innocent. It was so innocent and it was made, all made in one room. So we kind of just tried to do the same, but include a little bit of bigger studio time. So we, um, we had a bass player and a drummer on the record. So we had 10 days in a big studio and then six weeks just in a box, just losing our minds. And that's where the O Wonder sound comes from, I think. Mm. When the bass player and the drummer come in, is there a little bit of like, hold on here now? Like, are you are you part of us? <laughs> <laughs> We've yeah. known them for so long. They're like really good friends. They yeah. tour with us, so they're our live band as well. So um, it was very fun. It was really great, yeah. And you really are enjoying this. Like, uh, um, when you're a songwriter, your dream is for like someone like Katy Perry or someone like Justin Bieber to, to sing one of your songs and make you a, a kajillionaire, and you can <laughs> live in a beach house and drink margaritas Get wearing a fat, leopard donuts. skin robe. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I don't know why. That very, sounds great. It's pretty specific. Is that, is that, your is that dream? yours? Did you just tell us your it's dream? Kind of my leopard dream. Skin, do you have one at home? No. Like in the closet waiting for the moment. No, but I think everything I just described is actually not that expensive. Yeah. <laughs> like like a cheetah print robe is Should probably like 30, 30 bucks. Like a margarita machine is like a yeah. hundred bucks. Pre-made not to say that that's like not a whole lot of, you know, but like, that's not, I could do it. That's yeah. good. I got oh. a job. <laughs> so maybe I have everything I need now. <laughs> you don't need to write songs to get that stuff. <laughs> but but does, does it change your, does it change your aspirations? Like uh, what, some people, all they ever want to do is perform. All they ever mm-hmm. want to do is tour and make records. All they ever want to do is stand on stage in front of thousands of people. That Because that wasn't your goal at the beginning, is it hard to establish goals for yourselves now? Mm, that's a really good question. I think through performing the songs that we've written, we've realized how they affect people. And that is for me, that's become one of our goals is to it's be able to write songs and then go to a place and see how they affect people. It's crazy. We've heard so many incredible stories from around the world that people have literally just been in like floods of tears telling us how our songs literally Save soundtracked or, yeah. like the craziest moments. They, could they come up to you really? Yeah. it's oh. what, are they, what do they say? What are some of We've the had, things? Oh, there's so many incredible stories. Just, just you know, how our songs have soundtracked just the highs and lows of people's life, losing people, falling in love. We get played at loads of weddings for first dances and things like that mm-hmm. because people feel like their relationship mm-hmm. is soundtracked with our records mm-hmm. and um, we get a lot of proposals at yeah. our show and there things was this, like that. But... Actually, for Ultra, there was this amazing kid called Noah oh, yeah. um, and he was the first ever person to hear the song Ultra Life because um, he was basically, he was dying of cancer and he, how old was he? He was, like, he was 18. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And we sent him Ultra Life the night before he actually passed. We kept on Skyping him as he was kind of... He was like a huge fan. He'd like been to our shows and then just developed this cool like kid. really, really rare form of cancer. And then they played Ultra Life at his funeral and his dad like emailed it to us. And there was 4,000 people at his funeral. He was just like he was a just mad like kid. such he a was, cool kid. Yeah, really cool kid. So to be involved in other people's lives like that, it's just... And Amazing. now, like, all his family, like, feel like Ultra Life is, like, their connection to life, him yeah. because that's the last song he listened to and he was the first person in the world to hear it and just little things like that. We had, There are so many of those stories, but they live with us. Like, that's more important than anything yeah, for us yeah. Like, because music is one of those rare forces that brings people together from all backgrounds, all races, religions, ages, whatever. Like, you're just a bunch of people in a room listening to an album live or, mm-hmm. you know, radio. Like, you know, there's tons of people listening and it brings people together. It's I, I feel like to be working in one of the few industries I think that, that can achieve that so seamlessly and so beautifully and mm. yeah I, I definitely felt all those things when I was listening to this record so congratulations on it thank you 